Welcome to the Elevate Podcast, brought to you by the Registered Master Builders, where we're all about building better businesses. Each week we explore the ideas and practices that help us get the best from our businesses, our teams, and ourselves. I'm your host, Ryan Castle, along with Dr. Mike Ashby. We talk to experts, advocates, and business owners in the construction industry to share their knowledge, insights, and experiences to help you build a better business and enjoy a better life. In addition to the podcast, the Registered Master Builders Elevate is also an online learning platform hosting courses, programs, and content that help construction business owners and their staff to build a better business. Now let the business building begin. Mike, we're up for another episode of the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, another episode, or certainly uh, another piece that's big in the psyche of New Zealand at the moment, is the Rugby World Cup. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, as you know, Kiwis, we're pretty proud of our All Blacks and what they've what they've achieved. We are, and I'm conscious that um, you know people listening to the podcast, some of whom are kind of oh rugby. Actually, it's not so much about the rugby. The fascination for me, mm, all right, over and above the rugby because uh, yes, lifelong fan, etc. But I am just fascinated by the level of of performance that the All Blacks demonstrate and. And I keep making the point, this is one of the most successful organisations in any endeavour. You know, to have that kind of winning record, what is it, 85, 87% uh, is not about sport. It is about how a group of people organise themselves to excel over and over and over again. And they've got a, um, this, you know, really since 2004, um, they are on a par with great companies like like Apple, which has also done a you know pretty fantastic job. Amazon, which has had that growth, um, but it's even more precise in a, in a sporting sense, you know, because if you if you lose enough, <laughs> you're going to kind of you, your position in the rankings going to drop down. So I think they are really, and it's very very transparent, right, in, in a way that business is not. So much so, and we yes we're fans, but mm. you know, rugby is professional now. Mm. This is a this is a business organisation whose yep. product happens to be to be a sport, yep. but they are a professional organisation right from yep. the way they are governed to the sponsorship deals and commercials that they have to make make work through to the performance on the field. Yeah, and even the very best companies in the world normally only have to give uh, profit indications once a quarter and release That's the right. results once yeah, every yeah, yeah. every yeah. six months yeah. as a sporting organization in the professional area era, era yeah. you are uh, your your results are getting released like at the moment rugby world kept they're getting released about every five days and you're as good as your last game and and you know yes you carry as a company you carry investors in particularly in New Zealand it is part of our culture it is it is a, something that we have a national pride in and a national uh, investment in that it's kind of you know, it's not quite the happiness of an entire nation is, is contingent on it. I think we accept we're a little more mature about it now that we've <coughs> finally got that second one out of the way. <laughs> Certainly before 2011, it was pretty it was pretty desperate. It was. But what's what's really interesting is, you know, I'm so interested in the way Steve Hansen thinks and talks about uh, his leadership. And in particular, I'm, I'm interested in the history of how what he stepped into, what he's been part of since 2004. So it started with Graham Henry. Um, when they when they started out, they took over as the as the coaching team, and even that in itself, you know, that was a, a development. We didn't yes. just have one coach; we had a, a coaching team. Um, there was a culture of heavy drinking. Um, there was a culture of complacency. It was not in good shape. And these guys sat down, so um, Graham Henry, Steve Hansen, Wayne Smith, really critical part of it. Biggest, the big thinker in all of it. Huge. Brian Lahore, um, Tana Rumanga was the captain, Richie McCaw was already a, a, an heir apparent. Yes. And a, and a bunch of those guys sat down and took a look at what they did. And the fundamental problem was whatever plan the coaches had usually disappeared on field and the game would be lost because the players wouldn't execute mm. the plan. And, and, mm. and not through lack of a, you know, a good plan, um, sometimes a lack of a good plan. But, what, you know, what, is it, what is it that Mike Tyson says? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And then, then everything changes, right? And that's what was happening, consistently happening, was that they weren't dealing with the challenges. 
and they realized that they couldn't do it from the coaching box which was massive for particularly for graham henry who was pretty old school autocratic he used to be a teacher he was accustomed to kind of laying down the law headmaster of Auckland Grammar School, yeah. you know, used to, you know, it was like my way or the highway. Totally. And yeah, that's a, even for uh, him evolving his leadership style to be able to take on the feedback from those players and go, how do we resolve this? Not like, I've got to have all the answers yeah. and let me tell you how we should do it. Yeah. But being open to oh, that. Oh, huge. That, mm-hmm. And look, he was coaching, he'd coached Wales and he'd coached the Lions. He'd been a very successful coach with that approach. And, it, and an example of how he had to let that go and shift the leadership from the coaching box to the field was Tana Rumanga. Had a, there was a, a story I've heard several times, including from Ray Lane, uh, how you know um, Tana said to uh, Graham Henry, "Hey Ted, who's the who's the um, who's the who's the pre-match talk for? Who's the who's the team talk for?" And Graham Henry said, "Well, T, it's for you. It's you know help you get kind of fired up and." All inspired, and T said, and Tanaumanga said, "Wow, Ted, I think it's for you. It doesn't work for us." And, Ky- and Henry was shattered. It was kind of, oh my Had god. Had spent all week planning yeah. it, it's like thinking about the sermon. right thing to say, totally. making sure it was going to be delivered with choosing impeccable. the right yeah. words and firing them up. And not interested. And a, and and so I think that a, an incredible ability to let go of what had been successful but wasn't working for these guys. And if we unpick that a little bit, I'm sure part of why it wasn't working is that different players are individuals and they respond to things in different ways, yeah. right? Yeah. Some of them will be wanting to be inside their own heads pre-game. Yeah. Yeah. They, you, know, you see lots of them these days walking around with headphones mm-hmm. on, they're mm-hmm. in their own zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the discussion has already happened mm-hmm. and they know the job they have to play and, what, and they will motivate themselves. We're talking about elite sports oh, people yeah. here. Yeah. You don't need to motivate them. No, no you know they no. are they are out to perform at the highest level. They're there to win. But the way they get in their zone to yep. to deliver at that level of performance is going to be different for each individual. Yeah. So as a leader, when you go, I've got a one size fits all that's going to help everyone get motivated, help everyone be focused on the job they need to do. Mm. It's just never going to work. Mm. Mm. You've got to you've got to get get that, some of that individual yeah. view happening. You've got to get that individual view, and I watched the Richie McCaw, I was on a plane and I watched the Richie McCaw um, documentary, Chasing Great, and you know he was a very unusual sort of character, incredibly intense, and the closer he got to the game, the more inside he went, and he said, you know, even for the, the 2015 World Cup final, which was his last game, uh, he said he would not allow any thoughts beyond those 80 minutes, possibly 85 minutes if it went to extra time, that's all. So nothing existed. He had no thoughts about his future. That you know, incredible mental discipline. And he would. He'd just close down, close in. And he'd be, by acknowledgement, pretty difficult to live with because he was so intense. Now, he's really, really unusual. But I guess the point is, isn't it interesting that the individual, you know, part of the challenge for the leaders, the coaches, people like Wayne Smith and Steve Hansen and, and, and Ian Foster, any of those guys, is that managing, having different approaches for each individual. And at the same time, there's one huge message about team Absolutely. and the importance of team. Uh, Brian Lahore actually was the other person who was in on that session. And, and he talked about how better people make better All Blacks. So they were very much focused on taking care of the individuals as individuals. And so when, I, when we say in the, in the program, you know, um, managers have, all staff have three, three questions. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? And are you committed to quality? Well, the do you care about me in the All Black context was, hey, you've, you know, you've come from this sort of background, you've achieved maybe this at school, maybe not so much. Here's your career and it's going to end. So how do we equip you for post-rugby? Mm. So huge amount of attention, including guys like you know, my old friend Neil Sorensen, who was in charge of the yes. performance side of it. And that was a lot about player welfare. So very, you know, deeply concerned about individuals, um, their kind of, their calibre, their, their curiosity, their behaviours. And, then, you know, they had a rule, no dickheads. So if you didn't, if your values didn't fit, if you were not a good person, you, if you were not kind of aligned with the team, you wouldn't last. Mm. 
And we see by contrast that at the moment the uh, French camp, you know, and of course our only insight is via the media, but yeah. the media is saying uh, sounds like there is a revolt happening yeah. in the French camp and the uh, um, uh, captain's not being selected because he's fallen out with the coach and blah, blah, blah. And that's a repeat of, I think, 2011 mm. in, in New Zealand, kind of the same thing. And you just can't build a co- cohesive culture and then an on-field performance when you've got that kind of stuff going on. Well, I think they... They do have a funny sort of culture, though, because if you remember, they played in that final outstandingly well. But that True. just says that their culture was less about team and more about individuals, perhaps. It's, it's a different culture. What we see in our culture with the All Blacks or with the, this successful organisation is consistently delivering because of an immense uh, focus on the team and teamwork and being good in the team. Uh, and and then they've got a whole lot of stuff about the legacy in terms of, you know, nobody you don't occupy that jersey by right. It's only yours. You're borrowing it. You're, you're a leaving it in a better place, and all those yeah. sort of you know yeah. rituals and stuff. Yeah. But fundamentally, it's about the team comes first. Yeah. And we know that in that in any organisations, the most successful organisations are those that are organised around teams. Remember the the work we've seen Marcus Buckingham do, for example, on uh, how much more engaged people are when they are part of a team. And I think the I think the culture in today's organisations, the expectation on today's organisations, actually has to be around these are groups of teams. I think we're beginning to understand that dynamic in the workplace, that people are engaged as part of a team. How we do that deliberately is one of the challenges, I think, one of the great challenges. And the All Blacks talk about this term of devolved leadership. Coming back to the challenge they were facing, things were, uh, there was a pre-game plan, or mm-hmm. a, you know, game plan prior to the match starting. Uh, everyone thought it might unfold this way, so that's what they planned for. Things then happened on the on the field, mm-hmm. and they just didn't know how to deal with, right. deal with that. Yep. And you couldn't go as a player, you couldn't go, oh, 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 could you just pause the match for a moment? Yeah, right. I just need to go up and talk to the coach yeah. and decide what we're going to do now, yeah, yeah. now that everything's changed. Yeah. So they, had, they figured out that they really needed to devolve leadership down to a senior player group yes. who could make on-field decisions in there. And uh, the All Blacks then had a fantastic mental skills coach, Gilbert Anoka, yeah. which by yeah. all accounts yeah. has been phenomenally yeah. influential, helping uh, people do things like get grounded right in the middle of the the highest pressure situations, yeah. be able to pause, ground themselves, get calm, yeah. and go, what's the best decision here right now? Yeah, yeah. And the only way they've been able to do that is this idea of devolved leadership. And it's... Uh, this has also come through in the military, a lot of the, mm-hmm. the military, you mm-hmm. know, the, the old style of command and control of mm-hmm. someone sitting in a battle room uh, thousands of miles mm-hmm. away with their mm-hmm. cups of tea, mm-hmm. making mm-hmm. decisions about how things would unfold. Mm-hmm. And they just know that things change exceptionally quickly on a, on a battlefield mm-hmm. and you have to equip your on-field battle leaders yeah. with the data, the information, the skills, the knowledge to be able to make split-second decisions. Yeah. And nowhere is life more real than on battlefield. For sure. And the amount of pressure they face by you know by comparison, and so a lot of the military teaching now is around devolved leadership. Yeah. How do yeah. we how do we make decisions in the field quickly? Yeah. And the interesting thing from from again again go back to the All Blacks is it failed massively. In two thousand and seven, it failed massively. That devolved leadership that it it was that piece that failed the decision making on the field in the face of you know an intense competitor and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, the courage piece, the real learning piece was to stick with that coaching team, to back them despite the failures. It's, you know, prior to it, they had, you know, if you'd failed to win the World Cup, you were gone. And instead they stuck with it. And now we've seen the results, not just in 2011 when they won, but actually in 2015 when they won again. Because these culture things, they are not short term. You know, it took eight years to build that culture and then another four to continue it. And another four, you know, you're talking about 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. A real long time that Steve Hansen in particular has been involved. And and what you're seeing is a whole lot of learning that's gone with that. I, I think one of the interesting things, one of the many interesting things is there was a recent game that um, he went on at half time and he gave them an absolute bollocking. What was really interesting was in the context of that devolved leadership, you still have to have a strong leader who does the devolving. 
and who at certain points says, you know what, you guys are way off. You know, as on-field leaders, you are not awake, you are just scraping by, you 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 know, you're mucking around. And he gave them, one of the guys said, don't see it very often, so I really enjoyed it. It was kind of you know, getting a serious bollock. But that's, devolved leadership is not inverted leadership. No, it's not, it's not abdicating. It's not abdicating. It's still in the context of what are you trying to achieve. Mm. I was having a, a bit of a laugh last night. I was watching some uh, sport on online, and they were giving the NFL the gridiron results yeah, yeah. out of out of the US. And uh, they are about five games deep in their season now, and uh, three or four coaches have already been fired because really? their win record in the first five rounds isn't up to up to par. And uh, it was just comparing the insight that the All Blacks have had of going, that coaching team could have easily been fired after 2007. Oh, yeah. And I, at that stage, even then, I think like the apparently Americans are still doing now, this thought that a single individual can come in, yeah. command and control from the top, and they're the ones that are going to yeah. make all the difference. Yeah. It's like there is no learning going on. There is no understanding. There is no culture building. Yeah. It's like, let's, let's have one charismatic leader because they'll solve everything. Yeah doesn't work interesting isn't it that in the you know the strongest leadership is actually the most humble in the sense of um, Steve Henson handing over that leadership it with a because he knows that he can't execute the leadership on the field in that moment he has to devolve it the other observation I, I make about that that power piece is that he doesn't often have to go on the field and give them a bollocking but he doesn't have to you know, the most powerful is often the power that you don't show. It's the possibility of that power that makes you really powerful. No one wants to see Steve Hansen come on the field and give them a bollocking again. But from time to time, you have to be, that's the commitment to quality piece. Sometimes getting that passionate and that angry is demonstrating your commitment to quality. There's a place for it. And it's about calling out the team for the things that yeah. they signed up to. Yep. Of course, it's, totally. your, it's not his level of quality, it's their level of quality of what they're doing on the field, nope. that they all go, this is our bar for performance, and we haven't, we're not meeting it. Totally. And it's not soft stuff. It's not, oh, not sure what's happening. Go. It's laying down the, the expectation, and we, you know, we, in, a, in a coaching sense, we talk about the bright light, the clear mirror, and the kick in the pants. And what happened the other day was a clear mirror. You're playing like rubbish. You, you, you know, you're all over the place. You're not thinking properly. Concentrate. In the kick in the pants. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating yeah. to watch not only the competition, but the the psychology and the, you know what lies behind uh, performance at a, at the highest possible level. Absolutely, where it's publicly on show. Yeah. How would you how would you like it if uh, every one of your business meetings with your team was live live broadcast around the around the world with slow motion <laughs> and a television yes. and a TV you know what do they call yeah. them the, uh, the third TV match ref, official. third match yeah. official and yeah. two watch oh yeah yeah that would add a new dimension for many of us yeah um, so Mike with this idea of devolved leadership we've got uh, a business leader listening to the podcast and going that all sounds great mm. how could they get started what should they be keeping top of mind when they're thinking about devolved well, leadership I, I, in the I business? think the very first thing they've got to do is make sure that their managers who are they're evolving to are competent in the core skills and are disciplined about the execution of those core skills and that's you know the All Blacks take care of those basics the very basics of what they do and they drill on it and they're really good at it and then that creates the opportunity you know doing that enables them to have the clarity and the time and the space to be able to express themselves. I think the other clever thing about what they do is this is a team that just loves to express itself. So they've gone with a strategy of self-expression. In the context of, they really get their core skills. They are very disciplined and very practiced. And I think it's the same in, in leadership. You know, that's the, the point to our active management program is helping our managers become really good at their core activities of management and very disciplined about it. So true. And it's not to say that then every manager has to operate in exactly the same fashion, nope. Nope. but it's a guiding set of principles and skills that they can use, and then they can defer to their individual leadership styles yeah. and things that things yeah. that work. Yeah. And we've seen plenty of research. I mean, the Evergreen study, which yeah. we've, we've used plenty of times, found absolutely no difference in performance of companies uh, based on whether their leader was seen to be charismatic or not. 
Yeah, not yeah. the point. You know, so it's not the it's not the point no. of, of what's no. going, what's going on. Yeah, it's the skill levels and the disciplines of the people on the field. Yeah, yeah, absolutely spot on. So the All Blacks, you know, one of the most successful organisations uh, around, and I say organisations, not just sporting, mm-hmm. because of what they've, yep, what they've achieved. Uh, it would ring true that some of the things they've developed and found to be successful may well work for us in, totally. organi- in our organisations. Mm. And have a think about that devolved leadership and how you can get your managers equipped with the skills because they're the ones that uh, lead your teams in your, in your business. Yep. Totally. But there's a huge amount to, to learn and reflect on in that in that um, ultra high performance. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more about the All Blacks journey, there's a very good book called Legacy by James mm-hmm. Kerr. Uh, amazing insights into the culture of the All Blacks right from the beginning. Uh, but thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Share this out to some uh, people that you know that are looking to lead their organisations. I'm sure they'll find the uh, insights useful. Indeed. See you next time. Bye-bye.